ten for your exams. So, if the amalgamators of Nigeria can exit EU, nothing, absolutely nothing, can stop your exams. So, come along with me. <laughs> If Britain could exit the EU, if Britain could exit the European Union, as it did close to the midnight of 31st January 2020, if Eritrea could exit Utopia, if Southern Sudan could exit Sudan, then there is nothing that says nations cannot exit nations. To say a country's unity is non-negotiable is therefore laughable. It is merely wishful thinking and arose. Such grandiose statements are neither supported by facts nor vindicated by history. Eritrea and Southern Sudan confirm assassinated US President G.F. Kennedy's statement that those who make peaceful resolution impossible make violent change inevitable. Those who drive discussions from the open space drive men into silence where revolutions are made. Britain, however, is wiser. Its exit from Europe was negotiated. Tantamous and, and recriminating as the process was, consuming two Prime Ministers, David Cameron and foolish Theresa May, to quote US President Donald Trump. But Britain is is duplicious. It holds uncompromising it and forcefully exercises its right to self determination, but starkly denies sin to others. The world is yet to forget the independence or theft, hunger strike of Irish patriots, or the audacious bombing campaigns of their military wing. On Thursday, September 18, 2014, Britain won the referendum for Scotland to remain in the Union with 2,000,001926 voters against independence, while 1,617,689 votes in favour doomsday respond. Britain is solely responsible for the acrimonious Nigeria marriage of incompatibles, as it were, pages and pages and cantacarous birds were pigeonholed in the same compartment, the marriage of strange bedfellows daughters moving assuredly towards the edge of the Recipes. Other ex colonial possessions of Britain were quick to exit a similar trap. Thus, Pakistan exited India and Bangladesh exited Pakistan. Who makes the wealth of Nigeria? Oil and gas money and taxes. But who takes the lion's share of those resources and who have their own tribe in all accommodating? in all commanding positions. So, religious differences, economic and political injustice, each on their own, or one reinforcing the other, can be a veritable cause of people's discontentment and the eventual inevitable disintegration of a nation. The example of Pakistan, however, shows that a country or people disadvantaged today may not remain so forever if the feeding bottle is taken away from the lazy drone and the lynch 
pulls itself up for the brute stripes and applies itself to hard work. Today, Pakistan is a nuclear power, while Bangladesh is not. India also is a nuclear nation and one of the world's fastest growing economies. Despite Joseph Brazil, Tito's great work as a founding father of the modern socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, despite its towering figure in the then non aligned movement, and notwithstanding the fame he brought into his country in the Committee of Nations, Yugoslavia friended and collapsed after Tito's death. In fact, some of the world's most Bestial wars and outrageous violations of human rights and mild government crimes against humanity were committed on Yugoslavian soil. Who will ever forget Kosovo? On February 18, 2008, a bloody war broke out in Croatia where the Serbs tried to create their own state. In the altercation between Zeke an Ecuadorian officer recorded by Mungo Wugo Okoye in storms of the Niger, holding down an unwilling people and riding roughshod over the results, always in the acrimonious pattern of ways and avoidable disaster. Zeke was proved right in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia comprised six republics. Better still, six trained bed failures, namely Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Slovenia and Montenegro, as well as two provinces, Kosovo and Vojtina. Today, the same country is made up of six independent countries. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Slovenia. The war did not come to an end. The Leoverton called the Soviet Union Socialist Republics USSR, comprising of 15 republics, unraveled and disintegrated on 26 December 1991. And the world did not come to an end. Today, Russia, the then center of the famous, still remains a superpower nation, while the 14 other independent republics pursue their respective destinies under the sun. Be not deceived. Any nation or organization can disintegrate. There is nothing called indivisibility or in indissolubility about nations. There is nothing sacrosanct or cast in iron about it. The USSR held together by the iron fist unraveled. The iron curtain got shattered. Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall, like the biblical wall of Jericho, fell on November 9, 1989. Need I say more? Finally enter the exit. The national question has been a vexed issue from time immemorial, disrespecting ideological divides and confounding the best of thinkers. Master's thinkers grew grey lines grappling, grappling with it. In the end, it was the same national question that led them path to the disintegration of the USSR. In Egypt, it was a miracle that the minority Coptic Christians have survived to this day. In Turkey, once a flourishing and vibrant Christian country, the Christian, the Christian majority has been virtually wiped out. In all manner of times, under whatever form of government, and regardless of who superintends, superintends the national superintends, the national question has been a raging issue that consumes governments where people's sensibilities and sensitivities are not sensibly gauged, where effective solutions are not proactively preferred, where tardiness 
takes the place of time limits, where offenses and irritations are left to fetter, where rather than a nip in the bud, activities that pull the fabrics of the society to the sword that they are encouraged by acts of omission or commission. And where grievances, many of them ageless, are not adequately addressed, but are constantly swept under the carpet. Oppressive forces hardly concede anything to self-determination groups, except through struggles, many of them bitter, acrimonious, and long drawn. True, that are the words of Frederick Douglass that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. Weakness to the Charles Catalonians in their quest for independence from Spain and West Sahara's struggle for self-determination from the Iron Greek of Morocco. Nigeria fought a civil war between 1967 and 1970. After the BFNs failed in that project, there was a loo for many years. But cries of marginalization and nostalgic feelings, especially by the younger Biafran population for the paradise lost, have once again took the fire of separatist feelings in the belly of Biafrans. It would seem that the Yoruba people of the Southwest, who in the Nigerian civil war teamed up with the rest of the country against Biafra, to keep Nigeria well are having a rethink. The idea of an Odutuba Republic has been in the public domain for quite some time, since the second coming of General Muhammad Buhari in 2015, and with his nepotistic, clueless, and incompetent regime pondering to ethnic and religious fundamentalist bigotry. The cry for Yoruba self-determination has become more stringent. The alarming and mouth-garping insecurity in the land, coupled with the federal government's perceived complicity, have radicalized views and opinions from the demand from restructuring to more radical propositions. Since the federal government detailed, delayed, and in fact denounced restructuring, Various Yoruba self-determination groups now appear bent on upping the end. Enter Yexit, taking after Brexit. Yexit, full meaning is Yoruba Exit Nigeria, or Yoruba Exit for short. Really, really imaginative. The train has left the station of restructuring heading straight for the exit. Blame the impunity. Intransigence, audacity, metacity, arrogance, and pompous grandstanding of those who boast that Nigeria is the ancestral inheritance. A referendum supervised by the United Nations, not any senseless war, is However, the best solution to the Nigerian quagmire, let those exiting do so peacefully, and let those remaining in the contraption called Nigeria also enjoy their peace. After all, exit or no exit, we will forever remain neighbors. None of us can remove our land, roll it up like a musk mat, and transfer it elsewhere. Again. Need I say more? So guys, this was a good find and a read for me. I hope you guys had fun listening to it. So, yeah, if Britain could exit the EU, there's nothing stopping us having our own exit. Yoruba exit Nigeria. On that note, Till I come your way again. Bye.